you look at what has happened to the Republican Party over the last 40 years, it has maintained itself as a white party. It has stayed over 85% white through the whole period. What it did was it's, it substituted out Northeastern moderate Republican white voters for conservative Democratic white voters. And the irony of that substitution was that it made the Republican Party much more homogeneously conservative socially, economically, and politically. So by even though it, the, the demographic change looks like they stayed white, <laughs> they traded different types of white voters. So, and if you look at the profile of the Republican Party, uh, I have a paper on this, it's very <laughs> boring if you want to see it. Uh, but at any rate, uh, if you look at the profile, they've also become more working class Okay, so the party that that I grew up with, and I'm an old guy, which used to be the party of the wealthy, you know, the wealthier uh, income groups, is now a party that has taken in a substantial number of not, uh, you know, it's not a complete working class party by any means, but it has a larger working class component, and that shows up in the demography too. How do they reconcile that? I mean, it seemed to us four years ago impossible to reconcile that a person who grew up in a wealthy house, uh, who made his money with his father's money, who uh, basically lived this glamorous lifestyle, that he would be the spokesperson for the people that are downwardly mobile because of the ending of manufacturing and uh, the threat of uh, diversity. How did that guy end up being the spokesperson? Well, you know, a variety of things that we saw with Schwarzenegger and before that, uh, Governor of Minnesota, Jesse Ventura, there was something about celebrity, there's something about the so-called authenticity of uh, the way he postures that made him that spokesperson. So I think it's going to be very hard for the Republicans to undo that uh, formula.